Hey, book lovers. My name is M, and I want to talk about books. And cats. Hey, book lovers, welcome back. Please excuse my voice. I have the beginnings of a cold that my son brought home to me, so that's fun. I have a great episode for you today. I am chatting with poet and friend of the podcast, Claire Tom, about her new kid's book, Fox and Dog, Pangram Pals. It's a super cute book with beautiful watercolor illustrations by her dad, and all of the profits get donated to support a a UK service dog charity. So you get to support a great cause too. I talked about the book in a previous episode and I have shared it with some little ones in my life. Definitely be sure to check out Fox and Dog, share it with the little ones in your life. There's going to be a link in the show notes and also check out Claire Tom's Instagram for more of her wonderful poetry. That link is also in the show notes. <laughs> Now, without further ado, here is my chat with poet Claire Tom. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm fine, I'm okay. Enjoying a relaxing Sunday. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I'm kind of just getting mine started. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah, that's right. And uh, our clocks changed last night. I think your clocks changed a couple of weeks ago. It's different in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we went forward last night. So I'm I'm missing that hour. Oh no. <laughs> I'm feeling like I could have done with an extra hour. But yeah. <laughs> so recently you released a new book, mm-hmm, right? right. Uh, Fox and Dog. Mm-hmm. So tell me about that. How did that come to be? So uh last year I decided to buy myself a typewriter. Ooh. <laughs> um and the the shop that I bought it from, um, which is down in the south of Spain, sent it to me and it came with like various different documents. And uh, one of the phrases written on the, the document was the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, oh. which I was like, oh, that's I, I think I'd always heard the phrase, but I didn't really. I was like, why is that written? Yeah. <laughs> I'd heard that too and didn't know what that was. <laughs> yeah, so I investigated and and the phrase, well, the phrase is a pangram, which means it has every letter of the alphabet and it's traditionally used to test typewriters because oh. it, tests, it tests every key, it tests every oh. letter, <laughs> um, which is cool. Yeah. But when I read the phrase, I was like, uh was like well who says the dog is lazy you know like that's not yeah. fair <laughs> and, then, and then I was thinking like you know maybe the, the poor fox is just so tired from <laughs> jumping about and, yeah and and the story just kind of came from there these two characters and I thought well maybe they you know we need to know a bit more about them they've been stuck in this phrase <laughs> but there's sort of more to it than that so yeah that's how it came about I kind of wrote down this story and then I forgot about the story actually I just wrote it on a bit of paper and then forgot about it and then found it again months later and started to develop it and sent an idea to my dad who instantly started drawing yeah (laughs) and yeah that's how it came came together really we just we sort of built the story it's not it's not a long story so for kids I think it's ideal because it's oh yeah enough like I think it's great as a kid's book because it's not long as a as a book but for a kid's book it is kind of like longer which I think is good I always liked that better when I was reading to my kids you know if it was a little a little bit longer and it's such a sweet story I really enjoyed it (laughs) and I didn't know what a pangram was so that was interesting too (laughs) Well, yeah, that's the thing, because I mean, likewise, when I, as I said, when I first read the phrase, I didn't, I didn't know what pangram was. And I yeah. found out and I was like, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like that. I like, <laughs> find, I like learning stuff like that. And yeah. So 
I wanted to kind of add that educational you know element to my book as well I mean I'm a teacher so I can't help yeah. it thing that I'm like oh you know you <laughs> teach that that's cool yeah um, and that's why I wanted to incorporate that into the book as well so obviously you know kids are reading but they're learning at the same time yeah yeah I love um, that too and I yeah. love that there was a little bit of like there's also kind of almost like a almost meditation technique in yeah. there too just about like kind of how you deal with your feelings I guess and I love that that's in there too yeah and I think that's something that a lot of kids books use you know animals and different characters but there's a kind of deeper meaning yeah you're not you know you're not saying to kids you know so when you feel bad you do this but you're just putting it in the story yeah I think that helps kids to sort of think you know oh so the fox was feeling sad and and the dog kind of gave him this advice so when I'm feeling sad you know I can kind of follow that advice um and it's not it's not done in a, in a kind of complicated way I hope I hope it's clear for kids you know that oh yeah absolutely this. yeah because I think I mean we're obviously as adults you know when we get stressed we have more tools to kind of cope with it you know and and when but with kids, sometimes I think they can feel things, but they're not sure, like, you know, why they're feeling that. And they don't know how to kind of yeah. express that or, you know, or, or cope with it. Yeah. They don't really have, like, the words for it. And exactly. Yeah. I think it can be overwhelming to be a little person, especially, you know, the last couple of years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also the idea of sleeping, you know, this, uh, a yeah. lot of kids have, have trouble sleeping. And I think bedtime stories I mean I remember as a kid always being read bedtime stories and then and then oh, yeah them, you know myself and I still do now as an adult I read before I go to bed it's yep. like, <laughs> it always helps me to to fall asleep in a more relaxed way yeah and I think maybe sometimes obviously you know parents are busy or you know they don't have the time and and that's something that is maybe getting lost a bit you know that yeah quality time of reading with kids and um, but I think it's it's so important. Oh you know, yeah. Even if it even if it's just 10, 15 minutes, it's it's like downtime, it's calming and relaxing. And it's a nice like time to connect to, like right before exactly. the end of the day. Yeah. 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 When my kids were little, I tried to always make that like a priority. And sometimes like, you know, we'd overdo it because they'd beg and I'd read like six books or something. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> yeah. I love the illustrations, of course, too. So your yes. dad worked with you on this one. <laughs> yeah, they're so they're beautiful. They're lovely. Yeah. And um, I actually because in the in the beginning of the book in the first page I've kind of given special thanks to to two brilliant mm. ladies who helped me, Bex Sutton. So she has um, she's uh, self employed. She does uh, book illustration. Um, oh. And I I contacted her. I was recommended. Her name was recommended to me by a, another writer friend. Um, and so I contacted Bex. And I said, look, I've got this story and I've got these watercolors, but I don't know how to make it. Look right. Like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have those skills. So she did all the formatting. She oh, put nice. it all together and, and it looks great. And then yeah. um, also I give thanks to uh, a lady called Faith who proofread and kind of <laughs> edited it for me and you know and, yeah. and helped me to make a few changes to the actual story so with their help we kind of brought it all together yeah and made it into the the book because uh-huh. I think sometimes as writers you know we write a story but we need other people's eyes on it you know to kind of oh, say, how about you know have you thought of doing it like this or you know just yeah. looking at it because sometimes when you're writing you get so involved and you need to kind of take a step back. Yeah, and let somebody uh, else kind of let someone yeah. else look at it and you know make suggestions. So so those, yeah, yeah. they both helped me and that was fantastic. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Brought it all together. <laughs> and you've gotten to see your dad since the last time I talked to you. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Saw him. Yeah, my mom and dad came to visit uh at the end of well, in October last yeah. year. And, and that was like about 21 months since I'd seen them oh so wow it was, it was crazy yeah it was surreal yeah that was yeah we spent two weeks together oh that's here, wonderful and, uh, yeah it was oh it was so so nice, so nice. <laughs> that's good I was very happy to see that yeah. 
Yeah. So hopefully they'll come out again at the end of this year or I'll go back and see them. So yeah, just like so many people at the moment. Oh, it's so hard. It's so difficult, you know, being apart from family. It's Mother's Day today here. Oh, wow. Well, no, not here in Spain, actually, but in the UK. So I gotcha. (laughs) (laughs) So um, yeah, had a a little chat with her earlier on. Oh, that's nice. (laughs) (laughs) So I saw that on your Instagram and I have to say, like, I love your Instagram because you're always putting out poems and it's so nice (laughs) to just like, Because, you know, most of it's just pictures and I'm kind of scrolling through and it's so nice to just have like a little poem show up in the middle of scrolling, you know, and one that I that I kind of wanted to talk about that I saved uh, was time out. It's a little Uh bit longer. And I just I really liked that one. I don't know what it was, but something about that just struck me. And I was wondering if there was any sort of story to that one. Yeah. So that poem I wrote. I kind of there's a kind of twist in it like now that yeah. it starts you're kind of thinking what's going on here I'm not, yeah. I'm not gonna like I, as you say it's on my Instagram so people can read it but right. I wanted to make a kind of twist I guess I'm sort of personifying time really bringing yeah the light, you know and how we treat time you know and sometimes yeah. we we don't treat it as well as we should you know we kind of abuse it a bit and and so that's the message of that poem is kind of you know to to be more gentle with time to value it to you know yeah. to really take our time I suppose and and kind of slow down which yeah. can be really difficult <laughs> yeah <to> definitely <laughs> but yeah that poem was fun to write yeah I really enjoyed how it's it starts out one way and then it exactly it yeah yeah that's <laughs> what I wanted there's a bit of a twist so the reader goes oh okay now it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 I really enjoyed that one um oh, and I'll okay with the episode uh, show notes, I'll put a link to your Instagram so that Ooh, people can, can find it and all your other thank poems. You. Do you have any sort of like writing process? Like, are there things that you always do when you write or is it different every time? Uh, it's, it's different. It's kind of sporadic. There's times where I write a lot and then there's other times like for weeks I won't write anything yeah. or I'll, <laughs> I'll have ideas in my head and then I'll kind of talk to myself like no that's rubbish you know like I'll right. not going to my head and I'm like no yeah <laughs> not that way or you know other times I'll just get an idea and then that kind of develops you know I'll just yeah. get like a phrase in my head and I'm like oh that's cool and and it develops so it's very yeah I don't I never sit down and go okay, yeah. I'm gonna write now because I, I don't write like that and also yeah. sometimes I see a lot on Instagram you know people putting up prompts you know write a poem about this theme or which yeah. can be useful but sometimes I, I find that more difficult because I, I see the prompt and my mind just goes blank <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> yep. no you know that doesn't it doesn't inspire me I like to just sort of get ideas as they come naturally yeah um, and then you know scribble things down I've got so many notebooks and yeah. Just even like in the notes of my phone, you know, if I'm out and about and write it down and then kind of develop from there. Yeah. yeah. I, I loved uh, when you said that you just wrote down the idea for Fox and Dog and then found it later because that happens to me like constantly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just have little pieces of paper all over the place. <laughs> yeah, no, I did. I literally like I was tidying up all, you know, my pile of papers and then there was like wait what's this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah there could be something here I'm gonna I'm gonna develop it yeah I know but that paper just could have ended up in the bin <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I always wonder sometimes like how many things have just vanished you know because yeah. after a while like if it's been in a pile for years I might just chuck it you know? <laughs> exactly. yeah no but that's cool I think you know coming back to something you know that yeah you've forgotten about yeah um, and then looking at it again and, and maybe it changes from how it was originally, you know, because you've had that time of sort of forgetting about it and right. it again and, and, and change it and then develop it from there. Yeah, I think that's an interesting part of the process because I guess it is kind of like kind of a process. There's the willy nilly um, one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, as I said, I'm a teacher. My full time job is teaching. So right. for me, writing is, I mean, it's a hobby. And so I like 
the fact that there's no kind of schedule or deadline yeah. or you know it's very free yeah and, and natural which makes it enjoyable because I think as soon as you kind of put deadlines and things like that yeah. when the creative process you know can stop or be yeah. forced so yeah it's just and also I think for mental health reading and writing oh. are so are so good it's like you know you just lose yourself in another world oh yeah imagination yeah it's it's nice to have an escape sometimes <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. um so that kind of ties into what I was going to ask you just because I felt especially in the last couple of years and why I started the podcast was to make myself read more and mm. just that I was using it to kind of escape all the craziness like going on in the world yeah. do you feel like that do you feel like the outside world affects how you write or like how often you write because sometimes I find like I either get really overwhelmed and I can't write anything or mm. I find that's my most creative time because I'm trying to like just create some other world you know what I mean yeah I mean definitely like when the pandemic started and being in lockdown I found I was really creative Apart yeah. from, I mean I was on I was on my own at the time and I had obviously loads of extra time <laughs> right <laughs> and and I just was writing 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 and and from there like you know different projects have come up and I've had poems published in various places and yeah which is great but I have to say the last I, I think we're all feeling like this you know the last month which has just Ugh. been such a heavy time I yeah. haven't really written anything I sit I want to write but it's like there are yeah. no words you know yeah. to say I think how we're yeah. all collectively <laughs> feeling it's such a sort of heaviness yeah and and it's yeah, it is difficult, I think, because it is so overwhelming at the moment. And also the the uncertainty, you know, it's like, yeah. where where is this going? But then at the same time, you know, I have written a few little kind of short poems recently, nothing, nothing yeah. longer. But I think that's okay. I, I oh, don't yeah. think, you know, if, as I was saying before, it, writing, it shouldn't be something that you feel pressured to do. It's you know, it's enjoyable. And if, if you can't find the words, well, that's okay as well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah sometimes I feel like you just like the words are in there, but you have to kind of let them percolate a little longer to sort things out. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. But I have been doing a lot of reading though. Because oh, that's yeah. something I really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what have you been reading lately? Well, I'm reading, I, I'm reading a couple of books kind of at the same time. I yeah. Between them. And one that I do actually really have to recommend is Tatiana Demford's book, Motherland. Oh, okay. So, Tatiana, I got to know through uh, Blood Moon Poetry, which oh. is a fantastic indie press. Who uh, I've had a poem in one of their journals and in one of their anthologies. And so Tatiana is Ukrainian. Oh, okay. And she wrote this book kind of based on her grandmother's life oh wow so yeah it, I highly recommend it I mean it's it's very moving but it yeah. kind of gives the reader you know a, a sort of insight to like the history of Ukraine and and the things that you know it's been through in the past and but oh, interesting. From a, you know from a perspective of of you know just sort of two ordinary people living their lives and all, all the things that they go through so yeah it's fantastic Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'll have to check that yeah. one out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm reading also a book by a Japanese author, Murakami. Oh, yeah. I love is, Murakami. Which is totally different. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite off the wall. <laughs> yeah. His writing is real interesting. <laughs> yeah. But but it's cool. It's intriguing. I'm happy oh, yeah. to read one of his books and I, I really want to know like what happened. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. Um. Thank you so much for talking to no, me. Oh, thank you for having me on again. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> Always nice to chat. Yeah. So, well, enjoy your Sunday. Your Sunday is beginning. So yes, you enjoy day. the rest of yours. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah, you thank so you so much. Hey, book lovers. I hope you enjoyed listening to my interview with Claire Tom. It's always nice to get to chat with her. Make sure to check out her Instagram for all of her poetry, but especially her poem, Time Out, which we talked about in the interview. I wanted to use the end of it for the quote of the week because I just think it's beautiful. 
And this is the very end. Hold my hours in your hands without so much haste. Meditate on my minutes and be soft-hearted to my sacred seconds. There's always time. Like I said, you can find that whole poem on her Instagram, but I just really love it. There's also an interesting twist that I did not spoil in any way, but I just love this section in particular. I love sacred seconds. What a... It just sounds good. It feels good to say it. I just loved it, and it's stuck in my brain. (laughs) Yeah, I'm a big fan of Claire's work, definitely. So that is all for this week, book lovers. I always love getting to chat with Claire Tom, and her new book is so sweet and fun. And educational. I didn't know what a pangram was. (laughs) Make sure to check out the link in the show notes to get your copy of Fox and Dog and support Guide Dogs with your purchase. It's such a wonderful project. Thank you so much for listening, book lovers. And until next time, keep reading.